Say I want to write something on the screen and I want to write it by hand. For that, I have to use the brush. If I go and try to work with the brush, it doesn't work because I have to be inside the layer. So I'll double click and here the brush would start to write magically. Now here we have different options for the duration. If I set it to constant and um, Let's reset here. All right, so uh, I want to get my brushes. All right, so if I set it to constant here, I would just have something like this. All right, it shows on screen. If I go back, I will just see it all the time. That's what the constant means. So if I open effects, I have paint now, and I have these six brush strokes that I will delete. Instead of choosing constant, I'm going to choose right on. Now these are the parameters that I can change for the brushes, but they can be edit edited separately later. So let's write something, for example, um, animation. Now you see that every letter that you write is disappearing. But if you look down at the timeline, you'll see that something is happening. You're getting these layers showing down here, and these are the brushes. If I press play, I will see that the word animation will appear being written, but it appears, all the letters appear at the same time which is sometimes what you want, but sometimes also it's not what you want. So what you need to do is offset the time. The good thing is that they are laid down for you in the order that you created them. So if I go to brush two, I can just move it after brush one has finished and so forth until I have the proper sequence. You can overlap them if you like. So now we have the effect done properly. And of course, we need to observe this in the composition. Now, can we edit? What can we edit from the writing after we have done it? Now, here we have to extend this a bit more or shrink them down. But otherwise, um, that's what we have. What can we edit? If I open one of the brush strokes down here, starting with the A, here. I have the option to animate the path. All right, we'll see this a bit later. If I go to my stroke options, I can see what's happening here. So I have the A forming here. I can change the start percentage and I can animate this so it doesn't show everything. So for example, I want the A to start here instead of starting there. Right, and I want it to finish, for example, there instead of finishing there. So that way you can control the writing a bit more. Of course, you can change the color. Diameter, you can make it thicker. You can make it rotate. It doesn't show now, but it will show once you change a few other settings. If you decrease the hardness, then when you rotate, it would make more sense because now it's no longer circular. Spacing, like in Photoshop, if you increase it, you would have dots. And the opacity and so forth. So this is how you control the writing after you have finished. We're going to move on to the clone tool, which works similar to Photoshop. So let's say, for example, that I didn't want to have say the line here, all right? What I have to do is also double click to go inside. So I would use the clone similar to the way I do it in Photoshop. I would um, decrease the brush size from here, alt click and just erase, all right? 
Now, what I have to do here is work on a frame-by-frame -frame basis. Why do I work on a frame-by-frame -frame basis? Because whenever the actor is flying around, the line is not in the same place. And even if the shape of the line was the same, the surroundings of the line are not the same. So you'd have to always capture what's next to it. All right? It's a tedious job, but that's the way it's done. So you go and erase it at a frame here. Now, in this case, it's not really moving. But if it was moving, I would have to um, erase it on a frame-by-frame -frame basis. So that's the um, stamp tool.